Welcome to Bible 360, Luke. Jesus brings the healing, humbling, hope-filled gospel. The songs of Mary and Zachariah, Simeon and Anna, and even the angels show that male and female, young and old, rich and poor, heaven and earth can all rejoice because of this coming king. Women are going to figure prominently throughout Luke. Mary's trust in God's plan, despite her humble circumstances, is the first example of great faith. Later, Jesus commends another Mary for doing nothing but listening to him while reprimanding Martha for doing chores. This shows us that it's not about gender or job, but about faith. Jesus dismisses the rich men's offering, but commends the widow's might. Mary Magdalene, the widow whose son was raised at Nain, are just a few of many other examples. Luke connects Jesus' ancestry back to Adam because this is about all of humanity. Luke gives only passing reference to Caesar Augustus, the most powerful man in the world had known yet, because an even more powerful king has arrived. Luke gives doctor details on the severity of leprosy, the blood Jesus sweats in the Garden of Gethsemane, or Jesus restoring the ear of the high priest servant Malchus. However, the true malady of mankind is sin and arrogance, and the cure is repentance and trust in Jesus, which is why John the Baptist paves the way. John is bulldozing the high and mighty and lifting up the lowly. Like a doctor giving treatment, John provides specific and practical instructions to soldiers and tax collectors, as well as more general admonition to share possessions and food. Luke also gives more thorough home care instructions for the patient, such as how we should love our neighbor, share your cloak, go the extra mile, or extra instructions on following Jesus. Uh, the Good Samaritan, unique to Luke's gospel, redefines who is our neighbor. Those who work in the temple are not somehow closer to God, but rather the Samaritan who shows mercy is actually fulfilling God's will. The heart of what God desires, humility, repentance, and glorifying God, is not only for Jews, as the great faith of the centurion and the Syrophoenician woman shows. Luke is extra attentive to the Holy Spirit active in Jesus' conception, at his baptism, at his temptation, and at practically every critical moment and transition in Jesus' ministry. Jesus is not just acting on his own. He is being led decisively by the Spirit of Yahweh to carry out the Father's plan. Luke records a unique, many unique parables. Most encourage us to identify with those in humble positions, like servants, petitioners, or even serious sinners. Life's not about gaining advantage or power, but humbling oneself and relying on God's plan. The account of the rich man and Lazarus demonstrates that riches don't matter in God's kingdom. The parable of the talents or the unjust steward, the judge and the persistent widow emphasize faithful waiting because God's kingdom kingdom will eventually come. Meals and fellowship are just important in Luke. Instead of small talk or stroking egos, while eating at a prominent Pharisee's house, Jesus condemns the Pharisee's application of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is for restoration, not for condemnation. He also tells them that their luncheon is all wrong. They shouldn't invite the rich and important, but the poor the crippled and the blind. Then he tells a parable about a royal banquet and identifies the Pharisees as those who have rejected Yahweh's invitation. At another Pharisee's dinner, he pronounces six woes against the Pharisees sitting there. But Jesus does eat with sinners, and he calls a tax collector to be his disciple. He gives his disciples a special meal, the Lord's Supper, connecting his followers to his suffering and death, but also to the future coming feast of paradise. Jesus heals those the medical, social, and religious world have given up on, like Jairus' dead daughter, or the woman who'd been bleeding for 12 years, Zacchaeus, or the condemned criminal on the cross. Parables of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son reinforce God is actively searching for those who have sinned, and he rejoices upon their return. Jesus warns the temple, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the whole generation who have missed the Messiah's coming that they will be punished. While he prophesies that he also weeps over Jerusalem's stubbornness and its coming judgment. After predicting that disciples will be rejected and persecuted, Jesus tells them not to be afraid of it. Instead, they are to find solace in God's promises and in his plan to reveal the gospel to the world. Luke gives more detail of Jesus' interaction with political rulers. Jesus' kingdom does not mean a new political and militarily defined kingdom like ancient Israel. He's not advocating overthrowing people like Herod or Pontius Pilate or Caesar. 
for their pagan politics. Pilate and Herod officially both publicly declare that Jesus is no threat to them, nor is he guilty of what the Sanhedrin charges him with. But he kills Jesus because he is carrying out the will of the world. Luke points out both the cruelty and the unfairness of Jesus' crucifixion. Nevertheless, Jesus is teaching, even as he's carrying his cross. His agonizing crucifixion can't stop him from announcing forgiveness and welcoming the criminal into the kingdom of God. Jesus faithfully follows his Father's will, even up to his last dying breath. He's not a mere victim. His death will, in fact, bring life. Luke spends extra time on the resurrection and its significance. It's the fulfillment of God's plan interwoven throughout the Old Testament and his promises to folks like Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaiah, and David. The interactions between God and his people are eerily similar to those in the Old Testament, filled with sin and hardened hearts. That's why Jesus has come to do a new thing. Jesus has come to restore the relationship between humanity and Yahweh, as well as to bring a new way for people to live. Jesus is not just providing small-scale healings. He is recasting the world, fixing it, remaking it. Instead of struggling for and depending on power and riches, Jesus teaches us to show compassion, to forgive, and rely upon his guidances and gospel promises.